This lesson we're going to be introducing the HTML service. So one of the commonly used ones is to create HTML output from a file. So you can use regular HTML and front-end code, CSS and JavaScript within the HTML file and output that directly as a file. There's also the request, there's also the event object that gets passed in to the doGet method from the browser and that can contain values within the URI and you can pick up that information from the query string to the parameters. There's also parameter, uh, so picking up that information and then you can use that within your code to customize the output. So in this case, what we're gonna be demonstrating is how we can select a row from a spreadsheet and if, let's say we want the value from row number seven, we can update within the parameters row number seven and that's going to return back the corresponding value, which is uh, Lawrence 6. So if you update this, and I'll just put my last name in there, and if we refresh it, because that's coming directly from the spreadsheet, so we're able to use the row value and request the value that we want from the spreadsheet and return that within the web app. So that's coming up in this lesson, looking at the request parameters. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the HTML service and outputting content as HTML into our web app. So that's going to be using the doGet function, so creating that on our editor. So it's a doGet, and this is the default function that's going to be, must be included for your web app. And basically, it tells the script how to serve up the page, so we can return back the content as HTML output, and also connect that to a file in order to output the content from a predefined file. And this is just going to be simpler to what we get with HTML code, where we can run JavaScript, CSS, and HTML. So under the files, select add new file, and the new file that we're adding is going to be an HTML file. And I'm going to just go ahead and call it index. So it builds our typical HTML file. And then here we can say hello world and also you can add in whatever content you want. So let's uh, create a div and just put my name there. And also with uh, HTML in the front end code, uh, if you're more comfortable using your editor, you can write that within your editor and then just copy and paste it within the Google Apps script. So in order to render out the content, we need to return content. So we can use the HTML service in order to create, and we've got a few options here. So the one that we're going to be looking at is going to be create output from file, as we do have a file that has the output that we want to create, and this is going to be expecting a string value. So we can add in just index. And now let's go to deploy, and under the test deployments, we can run the code within the browser, and we see that we get the output there. and all of the content from the HTML. And within the HTML, you can also apply styling. So within the style tags, you can add in styling properties. So selecting body, and uh, let's uh, do the background color. So let's set the background color to be red. And we go out here, refresh it, and go out here, refresh it, and that's going to update the background color of the selected element. You're also able to run JavaScript file. So you could have a script file or script tags. And then within the script tags, you can run some JavaScript code. So in this case, uh, let's set up a variable. And we want to select that div. So using the document and query selector select the element that has the h1 and then for the output we'll do the text content and we'll update that to be and save that so that will actually run the javascript code that when we refresh it the javascript's going to run and it's going to make an update of the page content that's contained within the H1. 
So now it's made that update and this is all using JavaScript. You can also use the console. So if you want to get page element of the console, so just need to do a refresh and we can do the dev tools, inspect and under console, there we've got the selected element and that's just about being up in the console. So you can do everything that you can do with the front end code uh, using the Google Apps Script as well. Let's uh, try a few other examples of what we can do with Apps Script. So this is how we can output content from a web file. I'm gonna comment this part of the code out to a block comment and we'll create a second function that's gonna use the request parameters so that's going to be available whenever we're accessing the page. And these are the request parameters. So if you have something like ID equals 100, then that's going to be selecting that request parameter. So within the function, do get method and using E in order to get the request parameters. And if you want to just output everything that we have within the request parameters, we can select those values and do a JSON stringify version of the event object that's going to be passed in and that's using the e and this is all of the content that we're going to have within those parameters so it re requests and the e represents the event parameter and contains information about the parameters so structure of the event and so on so just outputting them to the page let's return and we'll use the html service once again we'll create HTML output and this can come from the values that we have there and this is going to be a stringified version of those values so when we do a refresh and actually this should be vowels with an S so save that and refresh so these are the request parameters and they of course can be used within an object format so they're coming in as an object format and we've got one that says ID of 100, so we can use this within the coding in order to specify and get values that are contained within them. So if, for instance, we want to check to see if we can get the value of the parameters of ID, there's a couple ways that we can do that. And also, if you want to add additional parameters, we can add those in and all of those will be captured. So there are two ways to get those parameters. So we can use the parameter object and val name ID. Or we could search within the parameters and get the content back within the object. So let's try a couple ways to get the parameter content. And this is all contained within the E object. So let's uh, try a condition here. And we're going to check to see if the value is of name is within the parameters object. So we'll check to see if name, if one of the parameters there is name, and it's within the E parameters. And if it is, then we can update and we can select that we did find a name that we wanted to output. And I'll set up a variable for HTML. And instead of outputting vowels, we're going to output HTML. And so for now we can do a hello for HTML, save that, and refresh. So we just only get the hello. So if name is within the E parameters, then let's get the value of name and update HTML. So HTML and add to it. So creating a div and closing the div off. So the content that we want contained within the div, we can get the value from the E parameters and we want to get the value that's being returned back. So from E parameters and using the name, we want to return back the first value because it's going to be returning an array as we saw. 
and then afterwards uh, let's add to this where we'll still output the values from vals because this is still a string and save that let's see what we've got for the output there so if we do get a value of name in the parameters we're outputting it that way and that way we can select that object information so you can also check to see if the value and i'm just going to add this afterwards so we can have the various conditions so we can check to see if name and then in e parameter because there's another parameter object as well and if it is then we don't have to do, return it back within an array we can just do it within the first one uh, so let's set this as h2 and save it and let's update so we're able to use either one so we can use the parameters or the parameter uh, depending on what values we're trying to return back if we're looking for a value that doesn't exist because we've got a condition we'll just skip over those so these are only if it exists within the request parameters so you can do things where if you wanted to select a particular uh, page or value so let's uh, use a row value so row equals four and if we have a row value then we can check the spreadsheet and return back the response value from the row if we want so if row is in e parameter then we can look for that row value and return back the content let's select the sheet and we're going to get the row contents from the sheet so selecting the spreadsheet object and using the spreadsheet app get or open sheet by ID so we can specify the ID value of the sheet and I have that here within the URL so grabbing the ID and set that as a value string value that we can select the ID and then get sheet by by name and let's select the data from sheet data one and then we can also get the data range to get all of the data and then get the values so that we're returning it back within an array so maybe we'll just update this to data and or we can call it data still and if we then we want to get the value of the row parameter so let's uh, set up the row and this is going to be the same thing that we did here where we're getting the value of row and then what we want to do is we want to see if the value of row is larger than the value for the sheets so we'll check to see if the value for row is greater than the value for data length and actually this should be less than or equal to and else we can return back HTML plus and I'll just say row was not available so if the number is too large then we're going to return back the row was not available and uh, set this within an h2 and save that and if it is available then we want to get the row value so using the HTML and I'll use the h2 as well for this one and let's add the contents of the row into here so for the data row using the row as an index value we want to return back that content and then using json stringify we can output it as a stringified value so let's see what happens when we refresh so we're looking for content from row four 
and we'll see if that matches with the content from row four. So that's how we're able to select content. And then also, of course, since it's within an object format, originally, before we stringified it, we can also update and select the content specifically and do stuff with that content. So this is all coming from the request parameters. So in case we want to update, if we want to go to seven, it's going to get the contents from seven. Let's try 77. I know we don't have a row. So we get the message that the row was not available. So the largest row that we have is 12. Let's try out row number 12 to retrieve back the content. So it comes back as undefined. Because remember, these are values of index value. So we need to actually subtract one from the row. And now we'll try that. So that gives us the last row of data. And now if we go to row 13, it's going to come back as undefined. And we just want to make sure that the row is less than the data length. So we don't throw an error. And so now we get the row was not available. So let's go back, try row number 12, and make sure that we do get the data coming in from row number 12. So everything is working properly, and there's quite a bit of information that you can get from the request parameters. Uh, so we can see all of this information we can use within our application in order to fine tune the content that's coming in from the request parameters, and then output it accordingly.